Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the land of the lustrous. Um, tonight we're in episode 11. Um, so, what happened last time? Where are we? What's going on? Um, first let me just say it's actually really sad that we're on 11 out of 12 because there's only 12 and there's no season 2, and that's terribly sad. Um, and so let me write just quick boom comments. Um, couple, first thing is just like, um, I kind of mentioned a little bit in the last episode and probably in a couple other ones, uh, the possibility of reading the manga. I, I'm not gonna fully commit to it now, but like, this is, this is, if I, if I, if I can get myself to commit to doing the manga thing, this is definitely like, one of the ones I would do guaranteed, right? I'll just put that out there, I'll just put that out there as a little sampling, as a little sampling. Um, it's just kind of like, reading a book, or like, reading a manga versus reading a show, you know, it's like a different, it's a different environment, right? It's a different medium, so I feel like it, it might take some getting used to, but you know, might as well get used to it with Land of the Lusters, right? In a show about change, right? Mmm, mmm, tie it in. Okay, uh, let, let's actually talk about the episode. So, I'm just gonna go through the comments first, per usual, and then we're gonna maybe do a little bit of skim through, and then we're gonna watch the episode, and then we're gonna cry. I think I said that last episode, too. Um, yeah, so last episode, kind of tying into this, was literally Diamond, somebody called it like a quick time event, which was funny, yeah, right here where, you know, Foss and Bort, they team up. It kind of is like, like, not explicitly said, but kind of implied. Well, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's like said that Bort's might have kind of planned this as a thing. Um, I, I'll probably, I'll, I'll find the exact wording when we scroll through. Uh, but so this Foss, Bort's team up, maybe this is Bort's trying to get like Diamond out of harm's way or something. I don't know. Because, you know, way back episode like one, two, three, territory diamond and boards were fighting or what we're fighting the lunarians you know diamonds going her new fighting mode self-destruction no jitsu and boards didn't like that right so that kind of gives a reason for boards to want to change things maybe get diamond more in the back lines blah 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 so maybe there's something like that going on um but way more important than that is the whole giant monster lunarian seven arms murder mayhem trying to kill diamond diamond fights back diamond wins it splits into two phase two now we're in a bad situation right um which is so terrible and i don't know where foss is but foss being here wouldn't really help on the low key um i wonder how pretty foss is for a loon to, for like a lunarian because foss is weird you know foss is a freaking mixture right with the, the the platinum the gold the foss the Gold, the platinum, the alloy, the gold, the, the agate. Agate was the last one, the agate and shell mix. She's like a bunch of different things. Like, are the Lunarians into that as much? I don't know. Maybe she became like less valuable because she's not like a pure gym. Or maybe her being so different has made her like kind of diverse and has made her even more appealing. I don't know. Kind of a random thing. Um, But yeah, so important, really important thing this episode was Diamond throwing herself at the big Lunarian. Um you know, getting broken apart and then her limbs are cut down into basically blades because that's our girl Diamond. Um, this is, of course, I think what she was doing in like episode two or something. Uh, and then she uses her like, her fractured jagged leg to like slice the guy in half, which was sick. It was super sick, but um, I thought somebody, somebody said something about it uh, right here. Uh, when Diamond is testing her new fighting style, <clears throat> excuse me, of using her cut arm as a sharper blade, since that kind of self-sacrifice can't lead you to anywhere good, looking at you, Foss. That's, oh yeah, okay, look, in episode two. Okay, yeah, so episode two, Diamond's doing that thing. Um, I really like this connection of, like, Foss to Diamond. There's a lot of, like, really, um, like, good connection you can make between Foss and Diamond. That's, like, I don't know, it's pretty obvious. Um, where, at, like... Obviously, both of them kind of have a self-sacrifice thing going on, right? Foss constantly fracturing with the gold stuff, doesn't even care about her fragments, moving forward, getting tempted to, you know, cut her own arms off to get stronger. That's like very self-sacrifice self -sacrifice oriented for the purpose of strength. Diamond is literally making a fighting style around getting destroyed. Uh, so yeah, neither of those, like those obviously are similar. Um, but like, I feel like it gets even a, a layer more twisted when we like remember that diamond was the one that was spitting a lot of the bars about foss changing so like a large part of foss's character arc of uh, that's been going horribly terribly wrong was kind of not like it's not like i'm blaming diamond but like those ideas were kind of some of the seeds of those ideas were put in by diamond uh, i mean they were also put in by you know ant art and they were also put in by trauma um 
But yeah, so just that connection where they're both kind of got that self-sacrifice plus Diamond is putting a lit, maybe like projecting some of that inferiority complex onto, onto uh, Foss, uh, which, you know, Foss probably already had. I mean, well, surely, surely to a degree. But I feel like it started to like hit a critical mass where things started to change, right? So yeah, um, this was a cute, a, a cool detail that Bortz and Diamond, um, they refer to each other, interestingly. So Diamond calls Bortz Ototo or whatever, which is little younger brother, something like that, like a kid. And then Bortz says Nissan, which means older brother. So um, I didn't actually realize, I don't know if this was said, but I think it was either in here or we can just assume based off of this that uh, Bortz is younger, um, younger than Diamond, like Bortz is or something like that because Diamond calls Bortz the younger brother. Um, but like, if everyone's, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years old, I would like, there's kind of a question of, I don't know, how big's the age gap? Because that would kind of influence the dynamic. But obviously it's influencing the dynamic enough that Diamond is saying little brother to Bortz. Uh, and that's kind of a flip, right? Because you, would, I would kind of expect Bortz to be the older sibling looking out for the weaker, younger one, but it's kind of a flip, uh, a, li a little inversion, if you will. So I don't really have anything crazy to say about that, but I like that detail and it's good to keep in mind. Um, let's see the whole, it was really sweet. Actually, the whole when diamond and boards at the very end were like shared a few words to each other and they were saying how much they missed each other. It's like a very like, um, like absence makes the heart grow fonder moment, which I'm a hoe for, you know, like two people that love each other. And obviously like love can be a lot of different forms, right? I'm not using love in a romantic sense with these two. Um, it's more of a sibling dynamic potential kind of based off their wording, right? But, you know, these two gyms really care for each other, but only they, they realize that to what extent they care about each other when they're separated because the, the longing sets in, right? Um, yeah. So I really liked that. And that's just a horrible, it's, it's horribly sad because they're going to immediately undercut that, like that, like reunifying and that, like start that relationship, like how much they love it, um, with, the freaking, uh, the monster, <laughs> the monster's gonna kill him. I don't know what this is, but it's the monster, man. Yeah, the Lunarian, the Lunarian, it's gonna kill him. It's gonna take him to the moon or something. I don't, I don't even know. Or maybe Foss can go like, take her gold arms and just put it inside of, uh, inside of Master Congo's like esophagus to wake him up, right? Like inside his nose canal, like uh, smelling salts the guy. Sorry, I've, I just remembered to get my, my notation up. So yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. Uh, Foss, go wake him up. You might you might be able to be the only one that has the tech because you got the malleability. Well, I guess Cinnabar also got the malleability, but she's a little doing her own thing. Um, There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. I did read through all this. Uh, it mostly about the, I mentioned it in the, la in the last episode in the comments part that you could interpret um, when Foss was trying to get Ant Art back when she threw the sword that she might've been kind of like blinded is maybe a strong word, but um, focusing on killing the Lunarian rather than saving an art or something like that. Uh, so this was like some discussion on that. The part where I'm kind of at now, I feel like it's just, there were so many different like complicated emotions going on. And there was some really good breakdown in here about like, um, I don't even know where it is. You'll just have to trust me. Oh, someone said it. Pog to whoever said it. Pog to both to everyone, by the way, in the comments all, always. But um, of like, f like people aren't even mad. I think it was in here at the Lunarian right here, right here. Um, people aren't even like the gyms aren't even that mad at the Lunarians. It's not like they have like malice or hate for them as much. Like we haven't seen them, you know, form like Lunarian, like hate speech or, you know, anything like that. Like they're kind of chill with it. Um... And like, it's also hard to get vengeful to a specific Lunarian because they are all the same. It's more like a natural disaster question mark. I do like that interpretation quite a bit. Um, though, yeah, it's hard to, it is, it is hard to dig deeper because it's like, they lack like the gym structure, you know, it's such a unique environment already. So, I mean, do any of them really hate anything, right? I mean, Foss, I don't want to say it, but I think like Foss to a degree might hate herself right? Hey, who she was, who she, her, her, her own weakness, right? Um, and all that kind of stuff. So, but like, as opposed to hating others, 
I like, I guess you kind of hate the Lunarians as a whole, but like Lunarians are kind of a stand-in for the concept of death for them. So yeah, it's just, it's a very interesting situation. Um, there's, this was a good connection as well that Yellow Diamond was talking about like everyone dying around her and that's kind of a parallel to Foss. Um, and so Yellow Diamond, of course, was, I feel like the word, the word that I got from her was like an apathetic, apathetic, apathy, emotions are gone kind of thing. Like don't care. Um, I don't know if cynical is the right word, but definitely apathetic. Uh, and I feel like we were getting a big, a big feeling of that same emotion in Foss. Uh, you know, because she's sad and I feel so bad for Foss. Um, yeah. So anything else in here I was trying to blah, blah, blah about? Bing, bing, bing. Oh yeah, Foss, Cinnabar. So yeah, Cinnabar's kind of been pushed to the sidelines for now. Uh, it is important to remember that Foss did have Cinnabar memory loss. Uh, and it's hard to tell like how much of it has gone. I mean, she lost so much and she didn't like, she had to get like jogged back up. So does she remember the line of, of Cinnabar saying that she wants to be taken to the moon? I don't know. Probably not question mark, but maybe she has like some of the emotions surrounding it. You know, it's, it's such a, it's such a weird spot. Um, poor Foss, <laughs> poor Foss. So yeah, and Aunt R, her, her Foss's relationship with Aunt R has kind of overtaken the Cinnabar one, which is like unfortunate on one hand because Cinnabar is actually here, right? We can actually talk to Cinnabar and like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about make moves with Cinnabar because Cinnabar is kind of hard to talk to. You know, Foss has been struggling a lot with that, but like you can't get Aunt Art back. You have to wait for them to give Aunt Art back by trying to kill you with Aunt Art, right? Like it's literally a waiting game. I mean, have you, okay, have have they ever gotten a gym back? I don't think they have. I've never, you know, I've never seen, they've never mentioned like, oh, Zircon or Jade or Morsha or Morga or Ghosh or whatever. They've never mentioned that like, oh, they got captured, but we managed to piece them back together. We haven't seen like a, like a half completed gym in the background, you know, that's like, a torso and two arms and they're waiting and they're trying to find like the headpiece and the leg piece like we haven't seen any of that so and i'm sure they probably got them just in like pans or whatever they got them in their like storage like their filing cabinets um like any 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 you know shards of a gym that they're looking for because they are looking for a couple you know helio green diamond ruby sapphire pink i just wrote pink is that supposed to be pink diamond i i pink what just pink the pink gym oh yes yeah, my favorite gym pink <laughs> okay um but yeah, we haven't really seen that. So it makes me curious, like in the 3.7K year or 3.6K years-ish that we've been going, like, have we never gotten one back? You know, how long has this been going? Like how long's Congo been here? Because just because Yellow Diamond's been here for 3.6K years doesn't mean that that's how long Congo's been here. He could've been here, been here for like 8,000 and he's lost gyms and then gotten gyms back. Like maybe this is like his 17th gym family. I don't know anything about this dude. Um, uh, Mongo reaction stuff. I'll definitely look at how other channels do it. We can, how our, <laughs> we can look forward to how our beloved Foss continues to evolve in lovely, lovely ways. Smiley face. I just can't. <laughs> I can't do it. My poor Foss. The voice actor goes so hard. I'm just appreciating the voice actor. Um, a lot of good stuff in here as well. Diamond did fail and she's severely physically. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention this. It's, I think the most brutal thing to me, the most brutal thing is self-destruction is rewarded, right? And that's how it is a lot of the times in like in real life as well. Like I think a lot of people like take on um, like self-destructive tendencies or self-destructive coping mechanisms as like a coping mechanism, right? I kind of just self, self, uh, what, what's called begging the question kind of, besides the point. They, I think I, I feel like self-destruction behavior can be like a coping mechanism that can be used to like regain control over one's life or I don't know like mess with your like uh, I'm thinking I've done some like research uh, very light so don't I'm not a professional um, into like self-harm which I think is something that this show has like a ton of parallel to which is part partly why this show is like so brutal to me because that's such a like I don't know it's such a tragic subject already and like a really sad subject to me um but I think it's like 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 people that engage in that type of behavior or other self-destructive behaviors, uh, I think they can get like the the freaking endorphins or whatever. Like they're getting they're getting signals of like a relief or whatever. I don't know. 
uh, something like that, right? And so I'm trying to say that that is like a reward that the body gives, right? Like, you know, someone does something and then the pleasure centers in their brain go off, even if it was destructive. I mean, you could you can make the parallel more easily with like, I don't know, like cigarettes or drugs or whatever. That's like, oh, let me do an unhealthy drug, but it makes me feel good. So I'm rewarded for my self-destruction. But I think the self-harm thing is more reflective of the show and what the show's saying, especially with Foss, right? Um, though it hasn't really, I mean, that's a dark way to spin it. I was gonna say it hasn't really been about like, ah, I know, no, no, I have said this. I have said that it's been about, for Foss it might've been about, um, I'm thinking of her arms when she was, when she was um, uh, with the hole in the ice flow and it was like, she was gonna put her arms into like lose her arms and then she accidentally did. I was, I was gonna say that it hasn't been about, you know, self-punishment um, or like regaining control or whatever, but honestly, like I, I, with the guilt she feels for the, for the amethysts with her own hatred for her own weakness and her own uh, di un, uh, lack of ability to change and her messing up constantly and her being made fun of and her being the youngest and all these things, like, for her to want to punish herself, I think could be part of it, as well as the obvious doing it to get stronger thing. Um, but yeah, like, it's just crazy because in so many ways, like negative coping mechanisms are used for like to cope, which is something that people like need to do, right? Like, and it's it best case scenario is that you don't, you don't just stop coping, right? You have to, re like, I think you usually have to replace it with a better coping mechanism that isn't self-destructive. Um, but in the case of like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, why do bad things or things that are detrimental to people or de detrimental to FOSS or detrimental to whatever, why do things that are detrimental cause like short-term benefit? Why can't things just be easy and simple, man? Why is it gotta be so hard? It just makes me sad. Um, this is some good stuff. Diamond handled her pain and suffering and inadequacy with an inferiority complex. FOSS handled her pain and suffering and inadequacy with a fake cheeriness and innocence and defiance and frustration. Um, defiance is a really interesting word. I guess she was kind of not listening to Congo, you know, when she went out to sea and all that. So that's kind of like a her trying to prove herself thing. Um, but yeah, definitely get that. The double, the double sunspot, um, the hair grafting, yeah, Foss changing her hair. That's uh, pretty, I think the hair thing specifically, I really like because, you know, I've heard that cutting hair is, rec is like a, is a, a trope for showing change in an individual, right? Like, I think the way I've heard it is, you know, girl with long hair, she goes through a breakup, she cuts her hair, because, and you know, she's like claiming her, her womanhood back or something like that, right? And so for Foss to hair graft, right? Not only is it fixing a literal issue with her having a bunch of holes in her body from her, all her shards getting popped off and from the gold, and so she you knows she's reallocating, but it's also showing that she's gone through a, like an inner change. And so it's like a, you know, she's changing what she looks like because she doesn't want to be perceived the same anymore. She's changing it to look more like ant art because that's the role she's trying to take up. So like that, that, that very specific character move like has a couple layers to it, which I really appreciate it. Um, it's pretty sad. Uh, and then th some of this stuff, I'm actually not gonna, I, I kind of like looked at it a little bit then I, but I saw a few names I didn't recognize. So I'm not actually gonna look at that too much. Um, Cause I don't know. They're probably just character names that I, I haven't written down, but better safe than sorry kind of thing. Okay, um, what am I drinking, bro? Okay, we got two options. We got the Dr. Pepper, we got the water bottle. Um, it's like 3 a.m. <laughs> We're gonna go with the water bottle. Okay, just this once, just this once, okay? Listen, responsibility is important, okay? Responsibility, I gotta take care of my sleep schedule. Okay, um, let's pull up episode 10, boom. Uh, is there anything I'm trying to look at here? Oh yeah, the freaking Foss having micro sleeps. And dude, she's like insomniac now, right? <sighs> yeah, I am definitely of the impression though that like, I mean, the crazy thing is her being up all winter, which also led to Antarct getting iced. Pun, I guess, intended, but not really. Um, Antarct getting uh, taken to the moon, right? is what led to Master Congo having to stay awake so much, right? Like that was kind of stressing his his sleepiness and him being asleep means he hasn't been able to help out with the monster, right? So like if you chain of events it back, Foss 
could I could see Foss blaming herself for Master Kongo even being asleep in the first place. Though I don't know if Foss is trying to like really push that. Uh, or maybe Master Kongo being asleep is where the Lunarians come from. That's kind of a fun idea that we've been talking with a little bit. Um, oh yeah, the episode. Let me scroll through. The most important thing. Um, where was that line? It was like, they were running through the compound. Yeah, right here, right here. I think it was in here. Let me listen to this. Oh, good morning, character. Lexi, good morning, Lexi. That's how I feel. That's how I feel writing essays. I'm so tired of writing. Taking me all night. Bye, Diamond. New Lunarian just dropped. Is it, wait, was it not the, here? No, it's Bort, Bort. I think it's right here. Curb your excitement, you Lunari maniac, and tell me where I went. Yeah, that's another example. Like, like, Al Lexi here, Alexandra, I, I'm pretty sure this is this character. Uh, oh yeah, I have written by them, Lunarian fanatic. Uh, like, why, like, like, that's an example of them not hating the Lunarians. I mean, this girl literally, like, studies them and is into them. Like, they're studying them like an event because they, you know, not like a, not like a people or whatever. And so it was, like, different with the Admirabilius, right? The slug people, the flesh, you know, because they felt very individual, but the Lunarians haven't shown any of that, like, I don't know. They haven't really shown a decision making, though we've seen them make decisions. We, ha we haven't seen them as individuals. They're not really an individual. Bro, is this human instrumentality? That's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, we haven't seen the Lunarians like talking as individuals or really acting as individuals, but they are making like strategic decisions. It's weird. They're weird. Okay, I think there's a line here I'm looking for. Right here. Is Dia getting chased around by that thing a part of your plan? Hey, um, Bort? Uh, Bort? What are you talking about? <sighs> yeah, I'm thinking that Diamond, like, Bort... Well, okay. Who came up with the idea for them to work with her? I, Bort just showed up and started spin bars, yeah? Yeah. Also, Jade... I love you, Jade. Just stop giving... Don't only give me freaking emotional reassurance when you're assigning me a job. Yeah, okay, so Bortz is the one that literally said, join me. So, I guess, I think that's what the plan is. The plan to replace Diamond. Um, because, yeah. Diamond do... Bortz do care about Diamond's safety and well-being. Um, but yeah, now Diamond is blind and without all limbs. And... There are now two giga-formed Lunarians. I mean, maybe they're, like, weakened enough that Bortz plus Foss will be able to fight them off. Uh, but who even knows, right? I mean, it's not a good look. It's not a good time. Um, I could also... You know what would be the sickest thing? Are, is Diamond's arm... Does Diamond have a full arm anywhere? Imagine if uh, Bortz grabbed, like, Diamond's arm, severed arm, and used it as a blade. Okay, just think about it. Because if Diamond is, like, so sharp and, like, it's the self-destructive tech, then a uh, new weapon just dropped. I'm done making Obsidian weapons. I'm making Diamond. We do a Lunarian, bro. We do a Lunarian, okay? The Lunarian's, like, turning us into arrows and weapons and fishing hooks. We turn ourselves into arrows and weapons and fishing hooks, okay? Yeah. We all become self-destructive, and we all destroy ourselves to become stronger. That's how we beat them. Because they can't destroy us if we destroy ourselves first. Okay, let's jump to the episode. Episode 11. <sighs> Am I emotionally ready for this? I'm like looking around my room. Like there's nothing down there that's going to help me. But I'm just like I'm holding out for a hero, you know. An emotional well-being hero. Let me get my hair out of my face. Okay, forehead episode. Lock in. Lock in. Lunarians, Monsters, Foss, Master Asleep, Diamond is in a terrible spot, Bad News Berry, not a good spot, let's make moves, um, I'm really hoping that Bort and Diamond, er, Bort and Foss, and maybe with Diamond somehow helping, maybe just by being a weapon, can clutch this out, or at least clutch this out enough so that we can get Congo to snap out of his nightmare that's causing the Lunarians to show up, because that could be a thing, I would be down with that, okay, episode 11, let's get this going in, 3, 2, 1, Bang. 
Yeah, you can hear the Nissan there. That's crazy. Or Nissan or something. I think it's Nissan. Okay. Bort's not going to run without Diamond. That's the thing. Bort is not going to take a single step if Diamond's... Bort would kill her... Well, okay, let's let's be a little careful with our wording because the show is kind of dark, so you know. But I, Bort would definitely die fighting for Diamond, right? Who, who would... I mean, I feel like Foss would... And by die, I mean get shattered and taken to the moon, right? Like, self-preservation instincts are, you know... But I think in Bort's case, it's because she cares about Diamond so much that she would do that. But I'm thinking of Foss, right? Oh, you sweet little puppy, Foss. Rip. Um, I kind of feel like Foss would get herself destroyed. I mean, she's always doing it, right? I think she would put herself in ultra harm's way for someone else, even if it's kind of, like, pointless. Just because she would rather, like, be destroyed trying to save someone than not be destroyed in not saving someone, right? Because she has all that guilt and like that self-anger. I just want to give her a hug, man. My poor 300 year old. <laughs> I like Cinnabar. I want Cinnabar to be relevant, man. I love this part though, the little ending thing, this music, the like the final little bit here. So good, dude. It's so good. <sighs> Secrets? Oh, no. Please. Wait, did that work? Oh, 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 it's like a monkey. Did it split again? That would be exceptionally good news, right? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, kill it. Thank you, good move. Immediately up with the, look at the gold like wrapping around. Oh man. The heel sword grab. Hey, 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 uh, teammate, teammate, teammate. Alex, help. Alex, dude, Alex, you ho. Whoa, you're not supposed to look at Lunarians? You're supposed to just study? Why is that? Tatake! Whoa, whoa! Alex is cracked! Out of nowhere! Okay, maybe she do got some rage for these Lunarians. Oh, what's up, Bort? Sports is just... Okay, I think we're totally fine now. I feel way better. I think they got a lot less strong once we uh, broke them apart. Especially with Alex. Uh, uh. <laughs> she is cooked. She's a... Is she okay? It was Red Alex. I don't... Wait, does she love it? Does she love it or does she hate it? I can't tell. What? Why are they like that? Oh, they're like little gremlins. Goombas. Puppies. Kill. What? <laughs> I kill it. <laughs> People's elbow. <laughs> they're Lunarians. Do not trust them. Oh no, they're not Lunarians. It's like what happened with the snail. 
It's what happened with the snail, right? Where it got like corrupted? Well, we'll see. It could be like, yeah, that they're like some race or some animal that got corrupted by the Lunarians. I could see that. Though it, it arrived in those twin since sunspots, right? It wasn't carried in by Lunarians. Oh no, yellow, that's yellow diamond. You know what happens to yellow diamonds teammates? They get murked. <laughs> Zircon. <laughs> You're holding it! <laughs> Dude, Bort cracked just from the stress. That's crazy. New meaning in stress fract fracture. Okay, okay, okay. They're not murdering people. Don't throw it at her. So time is completely fine. Ah, oh, it's just so crazy. It, like, it either is completely fine or absolutely game-changing when someone gets hit, hurt that much, you know? You know, you either get taken to the moon. Because, like, it's sort of, it could have been so easy that, like, one of the two big guys, you know, when, when it first split, just grabs Diamond, the other one's fighting Bort, and it leaves. Like, or they just kill, like, knock out Bort or something. Like, I don't know. It's so feast or famine. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. It's growing. Yeah, you put it all in the same cage. Oh my goodness. Is it tame? Is he gonna talk to Foss? Please be nice. Oh, good morning, Master Congo. It's a dog. Angry dog? Angry dog. Oh, she big, she big snoozing. Jade, somebody help Jade. Are you holding your skirt up? <laughs> Who was that? Oh, I love this one. What is... Who are you? Did you... Did someone dip themselves in something? What is going on? I mean, even they said who's that. Oh, it's Foss making a gold duplicate. Okay. The trail. I was so confused. <laughs> yeah, come here, come on, puppy. Ow, my gold. Dude, this thing was so scary last episode. Now it's just a big puppy, right? Don't let your guard down. No, I mean, they're playing this so, so like, pleasantly. Surely we're fine. Master, thank you. Is he gonna sit? Oh, he looks shocked. <laughs> wow, immediately tries to fight. I was, I did not see that coming. Those little gyms? Oh, no, it wasn't. It was Paw, giving Paw. Yeah, there it is. That's what I thought. Hey, dog, I'm gonna need you to explain all this. Shiro? You have a name? Hey, dog... Hey, Sensei, uh, your dog almost ate me.
<laughs> Why bones? Why are there bones? What is that sound? <laughs> Alexandrite. Does Alexandrite like do something under a cer certain chemical situation that causes it to change red? Because that that would be sick. Don't lie to me, you hoe. Good move, Foss. Press him. Slap him. Yes, Jade! I'm gonna smack you. Good point. You can probably do that. A good point. What's good with you, my doggy? If I might just inquire something of you. Be quiet, Rutal. Bro. Okay, so this thing doesn't have to do with Sensei being asleep, because Sensei was awake. Oh, wow, she's starting to get suspicious of Sensei even more. No, no, no! Stick with it, Foss. Reach enlightenment on your own. Don't listen to him. Actually, no, it's too painful. Just be ignorant. You just have a revelation? Yeah. Ooh, what's up, Cinnabar? What do you got? Shoes. Oh, is that Bort's? I think Bort's lost a shoe during the fight. Oh, no, she might have got it back. Maybe she's just got the dog on her. Nope, they're, they're boards. Brit. Yes, share it with Cinnabar. I like that, Foss. I like that energy. Give me the Cinnabar Foss anti sensei arc. I'm okay with it. Yes! Yes! Bro. No, no, hey, 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 don't you walk away from me. And we're just fine with that? I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, he's kept, he's taken care of you all up to this point, right? But. Oh, good move, Cinnabar. Whoa. Nightmare? Oh, it's like her, her wounds are reopening. Oh, wow. No, is that a new form? Is that a new false form? Wait. Oh, no, she's just glooping. Okay. Okay. Man, I'm feeling what she said, though, about, like, what am I even after in the first place? They're all asleep in the dog's fur. Oh, 
Is that the thing that happened to his arm? Yeah. <gasps> Is that Antart? Love Sensei more than anything. If only I understood what you were, Master Congo. Whoa. Mm. It's found peace. Oh. Is that like its spirit? Oh, it's this little puppy. Oh, it was its tongue. It was giving one last kiss. What are, you, what are you trying to figure out, Foss? I like it. I like the independent spirit. Yeah, Foss! Translator ability. Because, yeah, she could understand the, um, the dog going woof woof. Oh, is this the thing I was talking about? Where we haven't seen the gyms, like... You know, in non, like being put back together, like the ones that they're lacking. Is that what they're doing right here? Like Helio or, you know, the ones they're missing. Because it feels like they haven't made much progress in like ever getting a gym back. So maybe that's what, what was going on there. Or maybe she was just creating more uh, prosthetics. Or I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Oh, you're waiting to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to get picked up. It found peace. <laughs> Unlucky. I love Diamond. She's so cute. <laughs> That's funny. And then Alexandra shows up and freaks out. The cord short. Yeah, yeah. You were kind of for pod paroshka or something. I forgot about pod para. I never knew about Padpara. Well, 
Oh, but you're like making a... Oh, man. Well, it's like now you're you're not even getting the original parts. Oh. Ooh! Okay, look! Pretty good! Pretty good! What went wrong? Born with a number of holes. Whoa! Wow, so Rutal's been like sculpting. That's beautiful. The inclusions aren't taking hold. It's like a coma. Okay, that's exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of this episode, though, so I'm really glad they kind of showed it. Though that's a little different, because we don't know the, the full story there. Wow, look at that hair. That hair is beautiful. <laughs> Rutal's just looking at her like, yo. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, nice. Good morning. It's been a while. Good morning. Just met you, but it's been, a apparently it's been a while. Okay. I don't even remember your name. I'll go back and find that. <laughs> Man. So we're straight chillin'. Man, this show, you can never tell if we're gonna be straight chillin' or in complete misery, you know? But even when we're straight chillin', we get the hints of the misery, and even when we're in the misery, we get the hints of the straight chillin'. A little yin and yang there. Let me just listen, let me just enjoy the CD. Let me just enjoy the CD. I wonder why we're introducing this new character. Hmm. Because we kind of have like a big plot element, like a kind of a main story element going on with um, Foss talking to the talking to the Lunarians, like planning for that. So, bringing back like Rutal's old partner, you know, back in the second strongest after Bort at a hardness level of nine, all that. I'm, I'm kind of curious why. I also need to see if, if, if Rutal was saying that she was, like, born with holes, like, the holes are supposed to be there, or the holes were put in her, and she was, like, trying to repair them, right? Like, did the Lunarians, like, spear her, like, five times in the gut and steal those parts somehow? Or is she just born with holes? Like, that's the, the nature of the gym. I don't even know, man. Okay, let me get this, um, this concept art. Concept art. Ooh, it's the, um... Foss looking up at a uh, ant art. That was when the when the entire like uh, like the world shifted around, or like this part with Foss. Man, because yeah, you, it's hard to for or it's easy to like kind of forget because you know she's had such a strong showing the last few episodes, but especially when with ant art when she was in the gold box, I mean that was her being terrified, terrified of lunarians. That's what got her messed up with um, the amethyst twins, right? Because, you know, she was so scared of them that she couldn't do anything, and then they got munched in front of her. So, like, Foss is so des- Like, she, like... <laughs> the thing she wants to change, I think, one of the things, you know, she's obviously weak, and she's got a, the change from that in her new body parts, which is, you know, very tragic, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, but it's also, like, her spirit, right? Like, she's she's so tired of being being um, cowardly. Uh, but, man, it's that this line of, it's always courage, that's so good. Just how much is it gonna take? Oh, Foss. <laughs> because like, I don't know, man. And just the gold bleeding. I mean, it's almost like her own internal, internal, internal turmoil is like, you know, building like a pressure cooker, you know, rice kettle, like, and then bah, right? 
right here. Right, it's like all that stress from within her just shoots out. Um, and it, like the gold like specifically kind of makes me think of fear because that's what it rep that's what the gold box was. So it's like all the fears that she, you know, represses and like she's so tired of having to be so brave and having to be courageous for like the truth or whatever that it all just bursts out and like she just melts in it. And the crazy thing is this isn't even just metaphorical because we actually saw her with the gold covering her. So like she's having like, I mean, it's almost like throwing up. It's almost like she's so nervous that she's vomiting. And she's so like scared and wants to change so much and, and you know, hates her own weakness and but is still so scared and has so, so much anxiety that she just throws up. And then that like self, that self-reflective doubt of like, what was I after in the first place? Like at this point, you were looking for a job for Cinnabar and you wanted to be strong so you could fight for Congo. But now you can fight for Congo, but it's come at a great cost of, and art and a lot of pain and suffering through like the amethyst stuff and losing the limbs and all that. Um, so now it's like that debt that she settled on herself, you know, cause I don't think an art, I don't think an art, like amethyst twins don't blame her, you know, Congo doesn't blame her. I don't think Aunt Art would blame her, you know, Aunt Art, uh, with the whole, like, quiet thing, wanted her to be safe. That was, like, Aunt Art's goal, I think. Because um, most of, like, I don't think, I, none of them are, I think they all love, each, they all care about each other, and they all love each other. Um, which part of that thing I was saying, where, like, none of them really hate, there's no, there's, there's such little, like, hate or, like, intense negative emotion in the show. There's, like, Cinnabar, who's so isolated and alone and, like, depressed in that way. And then there's, I mean, Diamond has that inferiority complex, but, like, you know, she seems pretty healthy otherwise. And then Yellow Diamond's, like, apathetic. But, man, like, I feel like Foss hits another level with all this inner tur turmoil, um, especially because she's in such a flux because of all her, you know, new limbs, new in her inclu inclusions flowing into them. I'm like, I'm sure that's just, like, the vessel for change. Um, I just keep thinking of that enlightenment thing, like, seeing her on, like, a path towards enlightenment. I don't even, like... like I don't know. I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that, I guess, either next episode or sometime in the future. Um, where was I going? Oh, yeah. Suffering. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was I after in the first place? Man, this shot of her with the, the golden eyelids is so good. It's like she's bleeding from her scalp. And she's weighed down by it all, you know? She's slow and she's walking and it just lags behind her, dragging, you know, tracks through the through the dirt. Um, but yeah, I mean, current, currently she's definitely like settled with like, she has so much like debt for, to Ant Art and to like Amethysts and to all the people that she's, cause she's like, I feel like she's gotten stronger to the point that like, like she wants strength, right? For kind of, for helping out Congo to prove herself you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then now that she's gotten it, she, you know, she, like, she wanted it so bad that she holds it to such a high regard that now that she has it, and then she keeps having bad performances, though not even anymore, but she had those bad performances, um, though not even really, like, that much. Like, she's kind of been popping off pretty, you know. And Art, or the, uh, and Art was, like, she was doing pretty good with Ann Art, and then, but, like, whatever. She doesn't think that, right? She, she blames herself is the point. Uh, all those like negative performances have like got her self-hating and I love her and it's so sad and it's like man I just miss the old Foss <sighs> and this this is what I was talking about this is the craziest thing look at it like hallucinogenics LSD And just the, the shh, like it's better, it's better not to ask. That's kind of got me worried though. Like why, like I get the whole like, I mean, she brings it up to Cinnabar and Cinnabar's like, yeah, everybody's aware that he's hiding things about the Lunarians. I mean, I, you're just, you're barely 300. I know you wouldn't get it. I mean, that's not what Cinnabar said, but like, you know, Foss is the youngest. So it makes sense that everybody else has already kind of reached this conclusion. But like Foss, I feel like has approached it from a unique, a more unique angle where I don't know, I feel like she has more doubt towards Sensei than the others, though it's hard to make that assessment because we haven't seen the others like cope with this. You know, for the others, it's been like more in the past. I mean, I guess Cinnabar said that she's still deciding, but for, I feel like this was really, 
really interesting. When Foss said to herself, like, did I really just think the unthinkable? You know? Is it right here? Have I just allowed myself to imagine the unthinkable? To think, to like, to doubt Sensei, basically, right? Um, and to consider, like, Sensei as aligning with the enemy. And so, like, she's kind of having, like, a, you know, that crisis of faith, I guess. And then her having to confront, like, <laughs> her mentor, her, her like, kind of, like, kind of parental figure, you know, whatever you want to call Master Congo, her master, um, is what's causing her all this pain. Oh, man, this poor girl. And the cracks on the screen were such a good cinematic choice. The cracks with the gold seeping. Like, on the lens of the camera. Obviously, there is no camera, but, like, you know, it's part of that illusion where it's, like, her own psyche is, like, kind of breaking apart a little bit. I want to know the truth. Foss, you don't want to know the truth. Okay, you do not want to know the truth. I just, the truth will destroy you, Foss. I, that's my impression. That's my impression. The truth will destroy you. Uh, and perhaps enlightenment is the truth. You know, perhaps reaching enlightenment is reaching the final truth, uh, whatever that truth may be. Though, I do think that reaching that might might be the destruction of Foss, right? I mean, it makes me think of um, ego death, right? Which is the idea of like, like so, like getting rid of the ego, your own like individual, like your own individual pilot, right? Like there's me in my head, and I'm making these decisions. Like getting rid of that. And I'm just like a function of the universe. I'm just a process, you know, that kind of idea, the ego death. I've like, I, I kind of have an association of, of that with enlightenment. I don't think that's a fair thing to, to necessarily say, because I don't know what they mean by enlightenment. And I'm sure there's a lot of different interpretations of that. And I don't really blah, blah, blah. But uh, the, the reason I bring it up, despite my lack of confidence, is... Like with Foss gaining these new body parts and ship of Theseus seeing herself and you know being torn apart and sewn back together and but but her old parts are gone and new parts like like if she comes like what if she hits a point where there's no Foss left it's just gold alloy blah 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 um like I feel like in that kind of time like when it if it hits that kind of point that she's like spread to that degree or like changed to that degree. She might really doubt her own experience as like an like as an individual agent or whatever. Um, though I don't know, that's just hypothesizing the potential existential crises that Foss might go through in the future. Oh yeah, this character. What was her name? That was a little random. I mean, I liked her. She was interesting, but and like she had a cool design, but again, kind of just came out of left field. Okay, let's see. What's your name? Are you going to say the name? Second strongest after Bort. Just about as old as you get low. Born with a, born with a number, number of holes. So she she's always had these holes. I guess. Oh, and then Rutile has always given her injections of, of different gyms. That's where she got her medical training from. I guess even when she was awake... I guess? But then what made her go to sleep? Man, you'd have to carve that so perfectly. Modified the body and kept born with a number of holes. Oh! Wait, no. Wait, so is it like she, her inclusions are so bad at like, like there are none of them holding the ruby or whatever forever. So she keeps injecting things into her to try to wake her up, but she only wakes up for a little bit and then falls back asleep. Or like has the tendency to fall back asleep eventually and go into like these like comatose states. And so like, uh, let's see, whole girl. I should not call her whole girl. Uh, girl with holes in torso. Or instead of girl, replace that with gem. Gem with holes in torso. Padpar. My girl Padpar. So, yeah. So how's she gotta be such a good doctor? But as of late, there's been no movement. So yeah, I think there's been movement in the past, but Rutile 
but but Padpar has gone back into a deep slumber that that Rutal has been unable to crack this time around. Um, but because of Foss's experience at the court shore, we able to get some new ruby. Um, wait, just trim her hair and fill her torso with her hair. Right? I feel like you could just do that. I mean, that's what we did with Foss. I, I get it. She has beautiful hair. And may I don't know. I'll leave it to Rutile. She's the gym doctor here. Okay, I'm not going to backseat the gym doctor. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Man, but I love... I think one of my favorite things about the visuals of this show is the little, like, glowy effects they do with the lighting. So good every time. Hmm. Well, good morning, Padpar. I wonder what your plot significance is going to be. Mm. Foss. Oh, and, but Foss isn't even going to be... Okay, so Foss is going to question a Lunarian. I'm guessing next episode we question a Lunarian um, and then get a crazy plot drop. End the, end the season. Plot, plot hanger, right? Plot hanger? Is that what they're called? Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Um, so that would probably be like a Foss, you know, Lunarian shows up maybe to get Padpar because Padpar is getting introduced so maybe it has to do with her or something... And then Foss, you know, doesn't kill it, keeps it alive a moment, says, yo, what's up with my boy Sensei? Or I don't know, just anything. And then Lunarians are like, free us, help us, we're in pain. Right? And the reason I say that specifically is the dog, which he said wasn't a Lunarian, really, but, you know, what is it then? Excuse me, it came out of a twin, sun sp twin sunspot. Um that like it went to peace when it like re when it, when it rejoined with um sensei which was very reminiscent of the lunarians previously like bowing to him right so here's a kind of question there of if all the lunarians want peace and see sensei as like the enlightened one to give it to them um but sensei for some reason doesn't give that or at least is unable to, like, the, the, the Lunarians can't give that to themselves through Sensei, or something like that. Uh, in which case, that could give context to Foss, who would then maybe be under more suspicion of Sensei, uh, depending on how that goes. And maybe, like, that would, re that would obviously recontextualize the, uh, the Lunarians for Foss, which would be a big deal, because they got Ant Art. Maybe she'll even ask for Ant Art. You know, like, hey, I mean... What the Admirilius, they were able to they were able to um negotiate, right? Aquilatus was, because Aquilatus I think it was no, it was Vent wait, Ventry. No, Aquilatus was the brother, I think. I low key I didn't write it down. I'm pretty sure Aquilatus was the brother. So Ventry was the one that um like had made the deal with them to for her family, right? So Hmm. They are kind of they are kind of spicy. Then the Lunarians are kind of spicy because they're making deals for family members of the of the flesh people of the slug people. Hmm. Though I did think for a minute. Oh, we're missing Ruby. Wait a second. How much Ruby do we got? You know, it'd be really dark if we're missing a gym, but what really happened to them was Rutile destroyed them and then used them as ways to keep Padpar moving, right? Like, oh no, Ruby got kidnapped by the Lunarians. Rutal was the only one that saw it. And then Rutal, you know, killed her and then smuggled her into her lab coat and then, you know, took her to the lab and was like, oh guys, look what I found at the cord shore. A bunch of Ruby pieces. That would be crazy. Or like all these Ruby pieces, could you just put them together and make a Ruby? Or does it kind of need to be birthed naturally and then just not shatter, you know? Probably more that. You probably can't just make the birthing process happen. Though it is, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Um, honestly, that'll probably be where I live it, though, for this episode. Episode 11 of Land of the Lustrous. Honestly, a way chiller episode than I expected. Which is nice, because I can only take so much in this in this, in this this show. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have for this episode. Episode 11 of Land of the Lustrous. On the next episode 12, the season finale. And just the straight-up finale, because there is no second season. Um... We'll kind of see where that leaves us. We'll see. We'll see where that leaves us. I'm excited, though. It should be fun. Um, Of course, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, blah, blah. Come in and love you. Or join the Discord and talk to me or other land of the illustrious fans there. But until then, until next episode, episode 12, that's all I got for now. I'll be seeing you then. Peace.